This is fun. Oh! <laughs> I think I'm ready for the day to over now. What was I just saying? <laughs> this is risk. <laughs> Not happy at all. <laughs> you look like a dog with its head hanging out the window. <laughs> Good morning everyone. We are in a little village called La Roche Bernard, uh, up a lovely river called the Villain. And uh, we've been here for the last week. It has been a bit of a mixed bag, I have to say. The village itself is absolutely gorgeous. Very, very charming. It's, uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, but the weather has been pretty average. Uh, we've been here for a whole week, which is unusual for us. We don't normally stay in any place uh, for that long. But uh, we had a lot of work to do and also Nick's friend um, was here, not here, here, nearby, uh, on his boat and he needed some help. So we've been helping him out. We've been getting on with some work. And finally, the, uh, the clouds have parted and we are ready to set off. Time to go. <laughs> So, it reminds me of being on the canals. It's nice to actually see the river. The last time we were coming up here, it was like rainy and you could barely see the banks. It was really, visibility was really cool. Yeah, I, also, I do like the old river cruise. It's beautiful. Well, we're going to do a lot more of these river cruises as we go up. We get older. The old Viking river cruise up as the bloody Danube. No. As we go north, there's lots of rivers around here. Yeah, so tonight we're going to Pirac sur Mer, yep. and I think we're just going to stay there for what, the one night, and tomorrow we'll go to the Morbihan. All right. Yeah. There you go. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be. Bloody foulies on it this way. Okay, so we're just approaching the lock now, and we know that it opens every hour on the other side, on every hour on the hour on the other side. So it probably opens every half an hour on this side. Point being is that we uh, don't know where to position ourselves um, to wait for the lock, but hopefully all will become clear as we get the lock in our sights. Sheep. Yes, sheep. Are they actually ready cows? What? what? The big ones. They, they look small from here. <laughs> these cows are small, and these cows are far away. <laughs> small far away. They're not cows. They're clearly cows though, they're square, they've got f***ing horns on them and four great bloody great udders sticking down, they're also cow shaped. And they're white. <laughs> Sheep, this big, woolly, little black legs. Cow, kind of square, horns, moves. It's a cow. You've known this can, 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 can you sail over there <laughs> so we can have a closer look? I promise you, they're cows, in fact. I think you may be right. It's possible now that we're close to the there's a horse in there. So we're tied up to the waiting pontoon just in front of the lock. It's 12 o'clock and the lock doesn't open till 2. Um, partly because it's lunchtime and partly because we're here at low water. And uh, unlike last time we came up this river, that is not a result of kind of a lack of forward planning on our part we plan to get here at low water because even though it means that once we're on the other side of this lot we'll be punching tide until we get out of the river which is probably about between five and seven miles I think it means that we'll be getting to Piriac-sur-Mer 
above half tide and the seal, Kurak Zumeh has like a seal at the entrance to the marina and it only goes down. How does the seal work? I guess it comes up, I don't know. Anyway, there's only water to enter the marina at about half tide and above. So depending on exactly how much water there is. So point being is that high water is not until 6.30 tonight. So we estimated that we probably didn't want to get there earlier than about 3, 3.30. And uh, even though we're here for another couple of hours um, waiting for the lock to open, that puts us pretty much on time. So I reckon that by the time we get through and then to Pirac Sumer, we'll probably be looking at getting in at about five, which is ideal, an hour and a half before high water. That's perfect. So, what are we going to do for the next two hours? Lunching. Have some lunch, I think. <laughs> What do you want on your sandwich, babe? Yep. Yeah. No, you're not getting hummus. It's down the very bottom of the fridge. You're gonna have ham and um, ham and ham and rocket. Ham and tomato and rocket. Hey. They're both the same. Yeah. I ever told you about the time where I was rowing at school? I was in the rowing team at school and we were rowing down a river and I hit a swan with my oar. And they all know of you, that's why they run away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're curious. I don't want to give them bread and coat Give them a little bit. What if it's not good for them? It's not going to kill them, is it? You're not meant, meant to give ducks bread anymore. We gave ducks. We gave. gave, gave Ducks bred as kids for years, and I've never saw it harm them. No. Maybe I don't know what they want. So we're just waiting at the moment for the lock to open. We cast our lines off, and then the, the ecclesiastic said to us, "Oh no, it's not open yet. It's another ten minutes." Press the waiter again. Ten minutes. Okay. You go in first. Crusade behind you. The second place. Yeah, there's a slight crosswind, which I'm not overly happy about. It's pushing the nose around. There's a game called Sardines. And that game involves cramming as many people into a, I don't know, a wardrobe, bucket, I don't know. Anyway, this is uh, pretty tight. There's a little boat rafted next to us. We uh, tied up first in. I think we'll be third out, just the way that the order goes. So yeah, a bit of a, an interesting mooring. I can't say that we did it properly. Uh, we ended up with the arse going out, and when the arse goes out on this boat, she's gone. That long line, no fish, no fowl, nothing, nothing, no harm done. And uh, we'll wait for this to descend and then uh, head off to Piriac. Much more pleasant than uh, the last time we were going down this river. It's uh, beautiful and sunny and lots of boats out and about. Gorgeous. There we go. The hey, are we turning through the wind? Girl. How, how much longer do we have before we 
well, get a point of sale. What? How much longer do we have until we get a point of sale? Well, I said that once it's true, but they can't. Because otherwise you'd be kind of like short time across when there's too many boats coming up. Yeah. Like zigzagging in and out of the traffic. Exactly. Because they've got the tide with them. <laughs> and the wind. They're speeding along. Are going in the, in the same we direction. To swale with wind over tide, 20 knots. I know, it's it's bloody awful. Pleasant. You look like a dog with its head hanging out the window. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, we are out of the river, we're just in the river mouth at the moment, and um, I'm trying to get out and we are beating into 16-ish knots of wind. But there's a lot of chop as well because we're fighting the tide. So yeah, bit of a bumpy ride at the moment, uh, but at least our speed's picked up. We're doing five, five and a half, <coughs> excuse me, five, five and a half knots. We're only about seven miles away from Piriac sur mer so we, we don't have far to go. Um, so yeah, if we can get there, in an hour or an hour and a bit, just over an hour, then that would be ideal. I think I'm ready for the day to be over now. This is brisk. <laughs> I think I'm ready to be tied up and, and uh... Spanked. What? Tied up and spanked. <laughs> the well, weather's actually really nice. It's just that we're like feeding into some a, bit, a little bit of chop. Oh! <laughs> What was I just saying? <laughs> Jesus. We didn't film that because we couldn't set the cameras up because it was too like crazy, swelly in the entrance and the boat was like just rolling and rocking all over the place. So I was like, well, we're doing it without any cameras, that's fine. And bloody heck, that was uh, that was really something. It's blowing about, I don't know. It's just in 20, 20, it's 20 plus. And we came into this little channel here. We were meted by a very lovely young man in a rib who works here and um, he directed us to this berth. And because, as I said, it was like too rough out there to get ourselves all ready, we didn't have any fenders out, we didn't have any lines out. <laughs> It was mental. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Well, we had the fenders attached, but they were all um, up too high because the last thing we did with the fenders was go into that lock. So they weren't down low enough for the pontoon. So we didn't have any lines on. The fenders were all at the wrong height. We always set up for port. The idea being that, you know, even if it's a berth where it's a starboard berth, we can still go in backwards and, and tie up on port because Nick's controls are all on port. And you can see what he's doing. You can see what he's doing more easily. And obviously control the bow as well with the bow foster. So we set, well little we did set, I just put one line on port and then um, we were directed to this this berth, which is, well, I'll, I'll overlay some B-roll here. You can see what uh, the berth is like. And obviously there was no, uh, no choice but to tie up on starboard. So <laughs> it was like, we were getting blown onto the other side of the fairway. There's all these little boats there and like our anchor was just like swinging around as our bow got pushed aside and oh my god it was so close. We were so close to hitting those, those boats. Has, has your heart rate returned to normal yet? <laughs> do, you know, it's, do you know what? I, I wasn't that worried about it. Oh. Once we got in here, and I knew that the, you know, the bloke was helping us, and as soon as I've got the boat moving in reverse, I don't, I know it's going to go where it needs to go. 
problem with these, this boat is that you have to reverse into berths. But the problem is you've got 20 knots blowing us off. Well, that's the thing. There was 20 knots blowing our bow off. Yeah, so no. we've reversed in like basically... Almost perpendicular to the <laughs> exactly. pontoon. And you turn with the bow thrust at the last minute. So, look, I've had this boat for years and I know how she handles. You cannot go into a berth like this forward. You can't. You go in forward and then you just can't get a line on. And then you end up literally with the, the nose attached like a horse and the back like the other side of the 40 fairway. foot out smacking yeah. against the boat in front. Yeah. And there is nothing you can do to get the boat back. Yeah. This is the thing. We know this boat, you know, close quartered boat handling is hard. You know, that's not even to consider the fact that there's a tide here as well. Yeah. I don't think the tide really was bothering that much because I was so concerned about the wind. Yeah, it was really the, the wind. Anyway, we made it. It was, it was it was more like the wind and also for me the fact that nothing was prepared. So oh, that bastard. added. He could have given us that the bloody. He could have given us that berth. Why would he have given us that berth? Well, no, we could have just ferry glided into that. You just leave the boat there and it goes <laughs> push. <laughs> Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here That sound you can hear is Nick having a shower. I've just had mine. Oh boy, that feels so good. <sighs> We are going to head out into the little village. I can see from where I'm standing right now that there are bars on the harbour front and that is right up my street at the moment. Definitely could do with a beer and a bit of a, a debrief. But we're gonna chat about what we're gonna do tomorrow because our original plan was to leave tomorrow and we're actually suddenly feeling like it looks so lovely here and it looks like a really beautiful village and uh we kind of you know earned the right to stay an extra night or so because this mooring was particularly tough so we're just gonna have a look at the weather and see whether it is feasible for us to leave a day later such a good feeling to be in the sun's out this looks so lovely. We're safe in a uh, really well protected little marina. <sighs> Very happy. From a distance you can tell. Someone just said on our Patreon group, you know, it's a good mooring is where the boat's still float at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, and undamaged. Actually, it was actually a pretty, it was quite a pretty mooring. It was like we ended up like jammed somewhere. Oh yeah, that's we Got right. the boat in, we didn't touch anything. Yeah. We didn't, you know, didn't scream at each other. No. No, so it's good. It just, it was difficult. And this is what I've said about day sailing, especially in France, you set up in the morning and more often than not, by the time it gets to five o'clock, you get the anabatic or the catabatic winds that come in, I can't which one is which. And then you're trying to tie up when you're tired in 25 knots of wind. And that, that's hard, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. And especially when you're in a place where you don't, you don't know the place. Yeah. And you know, fair enough, marinas have got plans, but there's so many marinas we've been into where you go in there for the first time, or you go back after a period of absence and you don't remember like the currents. So it's hard, so day sailing is hard, at least when you're offshore, you're offshore. We have the, the sound of a carousel, we have two beers arriving, there's the smell of galettes filling my nostrils. There you go. Yes, this is what I was expecting. Were you expecting this? No, I was not. Being a blanche. Well, there you go. Oh. It's red. It's, it is. I hope you like it. We've got two big ones. Oh. This one's a it's fruit beer. Oh, it's nice. It's um tart. Mmm. That's um. It tastes like plums or something. Plum beer. Oh. Did she say something rouge? That's, 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 that's cherry beer. Yeah. Yes, it's cherries. And thus they stayed in Pirouac <laughs> for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I, for one, am very glad to be in. That's what we're going to do. We're going to check the weather. On Wednesday morning, the day after tomorrow, we have until about lunchtime before the wind fills in from the west. Yep. So we don't want it. So the mouth to the Morbihan is 18 miles away. So we can do that in about three and a half hours at five knots. So we can easily get there before lunch, before the wind fills in. The issue is that we need to check what the tidal strategy for entering the Morbihan is because if we can only enter on the flood, then we have to anchor near the entrance somewhere. There are a few places until the tide turns at low water is at 2.20 in the afternoon. So we might have to anchor somewhere for lunch. When's high water on Wednesday here? 7am. On Wednesday high water is at 7.20. Yeah, we can get out of here any time we want. So we want, we want to go over while there are, there isn't any wind in the morning. That's a problem. We need to go over before the wind fills in. Okay? So we'll go over on Wednesday morning. We'll anchor somewhere near the entrance until the flood. We can get the flood in. Yeah? Perfect. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing up here? So I thought I'd take the breeze and I love living on a boat. Great. Yeah. That sunset's like teasing us. We can't quite see it. Uh, so that's where the sill is. Okay, so you can see the height over the sill. Yeah. Got an early start in the morning. Yeah, nice easy sail. Probably more of a motor. Just for something different. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm excited. We've never been to the Morbion, have we? No. No. Focus. No, we've never been to the Morbion. <laughs> what do I have to say now? What words you What were you just know? thinking about? We put a ball fender on that stern. There. Yeah. Off you go then. <laughs> well, good night, everyone. We'll see you next week for another episode. Thanks for watching and leave a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual. Don't. I knew that that was coming. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week with our sail to the Morbian. Enjoy.